there she is, Gwyneth Paltrow, testifying today, called by the plaintiff, uh, Terry Sanderson, called her to the stand. It's a civil case, so you can call the other side. That's exactly what happened today. She told her story. Welcome back to this special expanded edition of Closing Arguments. I got to introduce the guests who are with us. and We've got Caitlin Becker, senior reporter, DailyMail.com, still with us. We've got Janine Driver, body language expert, New York Times bestselling author of You Can't Lie to Me. She's in Virginia. And Dr. Robbie Ludwig, nationally known psychotherapist, host of Talking Live and the Bite Size podcast. She's in New York, New York. All right, everyone, this is what I want to do. Janine, you ready? I'm going to play some testimony. Gwyneth Paltrow, you tell me what you're seeing and what you're hearing. And, and Dr. Robbie, you as well. And, and Caitlin, yeah. But uh, here we go. Here she is talking about uh, being questioned about some risky behavior on the slopes. Three days ago, um, can you believe it's been only three days? No. <laughs> me neither. So three days ago, uh, Mr. Owens um, in his opening, talked about risky behavior, risky skiing. Mm -hmm. And he made mention that, you know, of course, Ms. Paltrow was not skiing um, recklessly, not taking any kind of risky behavior because her children were there that day. Do you recall him saying that? I think it does misstate my testimony, but... Well, it wasn't testimony that you stated. My, my uh, argument... Can you answer the question? Let's if I remember what he said? No, just maybe do you agree with that? That on that day of the collision, you were not engaging in any, in any kind of risky behavior, especially Correct. because your kids were there. I was not engaging in any risky behavior. Okay, but also, and I think your counsel made mention of this in opening, that especially because your children were there. I don't recall him saying that. All right, well, did your children being there... Um, make it so that you especially would not engage in risky behavior? I, I didn't engage in risky behavior. I, I wouldn't with my children there or without my children there. Okay. And kind of in life, I mean, I'm a mom, right? I've got a couple kids, um, actually about your age, one of them, not your age, your, your daughter's age, sorry. I'm not that old. Um, when my kids are around, I kind of behave myself a little bit better, especially when they were younger, mm -hmm. than on average. Would you agree with that? I, I've always been very open and honest with my kids. Mm -hmm. And um, some, I, I think, you know, they know me very well. Mm -hmm. Right. And would you agree that you have engaged in risky behavior with your children present? All right, uh, Janine, what are your thoughts about Gwyneth here on the stand? First of all, I was a little surprised because I was thinking I was going to get a liar up here and the pants were going to like burst up into flames today uh, because of the opposing witnesses. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, I believe that she thinks she's telling the truth. I think you found the only clip where she's actually likable on the stand, um, smiling and laughing and having some rapport, you know, like I, I the, the TV screen almost broke when the smile came out here. I think they have great rapport. Um, she blinks a lot here, and this is indicative anyway with someone in court, an increase in stress and anxiety. The average blink rate is about 15 to 16 uh, blinks per so, minute. So you're, so you're seeing stress. You're seeing stress despite the fact that she's coming off to us not reading those clues as very poised and composed here. She is. She's coming across poised, composed, likable. She smiles. When she smiles, it makes us smile, makes us like her. I don't find her a likable person in general, but you found the, the only clip, I think. Um, this interaction and this score is really, really great. And the stress is through the roof here. By the way, I spoke about this last night, Vinny, is her lips disappear quite a bit. But here's the deal. Today, I went back and looked at a lot of interviews, painfully looked at a lot of interviews with her. And this is part of her baseline, those lips disappearing. So I watched an interview on CBS Good Morning. And again, same thing, just talking about her goop world, those lips disappear. So that's part of her baseline. So I'm going to throw that out with regard to stress. But this increase in eye blink, indicative in the courtroom, certainly stress is happening. One last thing, her eye contact is great. It indicates a high status. Low status people will give eye contact when listening but will tend to break eye contact when speaking. High status people give eye contact both when speaking and both with listening. And so she's coming in right here saying, I'm a high status person. Dr. Robbie, what's your initial um, 
reaction to what we saw today from uh, Gwyneth Paltrow? I think I was really struck by how uncomfortable the lawyer seemed while questioning her. It was clear that the lawyer was nervous and felt a bit intimidated and that Gwyneth is a bit imperious and very icy and she knows when people are anxious in her presence and she doesn't save them. She just kind of lets them drown in her presence and maybe that has a lot to do with her being high status in her mind. But I agree with everything that's been stated, uh, that she appears annoyed. She is telling her truth um, and that I think we're seeing who Gwyneth is I think she is a bit of a removed person. She is cold. Uh, she is irritable. She probably doesn't like too many people. And so in that regard, we're getting a hint and insight into how she relates to others. Well, I think she does like Taylor Swift, though, because there was a, there was a <laughs> reference to a gift that she got for Taylor, but I, I don't know what it is. It was never, ever revealed. All right, everyone's going to stay with us. We're going to play a lot more testimony, get more insight. Big day here on Court TV. Gwyneth Paltrow takes the stand in her ski crash trial. I will bring you all the big moments. Gwyneth Paltrow, the Hollywood actress being sued for a ski collision. This is a he said, she said on the slopes. The injured skier claims Paltrow ran into him, causing serious physical harm. I'd like to be vindicated. She denies the allegations and is counter suing for $1. Now, the jury will decide, and Court TV will bring it all to you. The Gwyneth Paltrow ski crash case. Live coverage weekday mornings at 8, 7 central. Only on Court TV with Force Factor. I was confused at first, and I didn't know what, exactly what was happening. It's a very strange thing to happen on a ski slope. Um, and I, I, I agree. I, and I froze, and it, I would say I was got very upset a couple seconds later. Okay. Let me just continue on here. I just want to make sure that I got this all right. I didn't know if it was an intentional assault of a sexual nature. Right. Okay. Um, was he grinding and thrusting or something, or just the noises? What's, what, what made you think it was a, an, a sexual assault? So that was a quick thought that went through my head when I was trying to reconcile what was happening. I was skiing, and two skis came between my skis, forcing my legs apart, and then there was a body pressing against me, and there was a very strange grunting noise. So my brain was trying to make sense of what was happening. I thought, am I, is this a practical joke? Is someone like doing something perverted? This is really, really strange. My mind was going very, very quickly and I was trying to ascertain what was happening. Okay, um, and I think you said, I didn't know if it was an accident, but he was groaning and grunting in a very disturbing way. Yes, there was a sort of groan coming out of his mouth. Okay, then you said, I froze. Yes. We kept skiing. Right. We went to the right. Yes. We came crashing down together. That's right. Okay. You said this man was behind me on the mountain. My knee and our skis will, were still sort of tangled up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that yes? Yes. Okay. Right. Our bodies were almost spooning, and I moved away quickly. Yes. And, I knee and my knee splayed open, and I was completely in shock. Yes. What a moment inside the courtroom. That was it, you know, talking about that moment of the, of the collision. Let me bring back in my guests, Caitlin Becker, Janine Driver, Dr. Robbie Ludwig. Um, Caitlin, to me, this is what it's all about. Um, you know, the, the whole thing of, of her describing what's going through her mind um, kind of almost ties into a little bit of, the, of her history, right? Was it, she was like tied up with Harvey, not, not tied up, tied up, but I mean connected to Harvey Weinstein in her career. So I could see how she the sexual assault might come was. to mind. She absolutely was, Vinny. Harvey Weinstein never sexually assaulted Gwyneth, but he did sexually harass her. He very early on in her career before she did Emma, put his sort of hands on her and suggested she go up to his hotel room and 
she rebuffed him, told Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt went and confronted him. And Gwyneth was actually instrumental in getting together all of the women who ultimately came together for the Me Too movement against Harvey Weinstein. And you have to remember, this is a this is a celebrity. People typically are after them, unfortunately, in one way or the other. As you heard earlier, she's dealt with a stalker during her career more than once. So when all of a sudden you're approached by a physical body, and as you saw her explain, her knees were spread apart, her mind's going a mile a minute trying to figure out what is going on and then all of a sudden you have the impact with the two of them come tumbling down of course she's trying to figure out what in the world is happening uh dr robbie Ludwig, does that make sense oh it makes absolute sense and i, I thought it was a very interesting piece of information um, where we really get insight into how gwyneth paltrow thinks and a little bit about her vulnerability that that is her first go-to we can understand why as a celebrity you are a bit more at risk um and then it took her time to figure out what happened and it sounds like it was a very confusing and threatening and potentially dangerous moment for her you're in new york aren't you dr robbie i can hear it i know you can hear that is new york sirens. city all right janine driver i have monitors in here so while we're playing gwyneth paltrow testifying i can see you and you were like busy what did you see in that part of her testimony uh, a lot's happening here first of all her, let's talk about statement analysis Vinny, and, and and you at home is um he kind of gently skied behind me okay i don't like kinda uh you know with with johnny depp's ex-wife there amber heard i said she did a lot of kinda he kind of did this he kind of did i say when there's a like or a kinda there's more to find her. there's more to the story and keep in mind this is 2016 so it makes sense okay so it's not a hot spot for me skied behind me past 10 he was behind me past 10 um this is really great because what we have with the plaintiff's witnesses is are, are telling as if the story is happening right now he's not using past tense which is a little bit of an anomaly in these situations we want to see and hear past tense the the hot spot though for me that makes her a little less believable i do believe she believes she's telling the truth now whether this really happened or not who knows at this point but here's the problem remember jesse smollett that guy that real that peach out of chicago that staged a hate crime remember him he's a real peach we don't have enough hate in the world when he would tell his story, right, he never looked her behind. He didn't say, you know, um, this guy came and, and said this to me and then punched me in the back. When we are reliving stories, especially stories that happened a while ago, we will often use the gestures where we're turning around. And we're not seeing that here with Gwyneth. I would have preferred her to be like, he came up from behind me and, and you know, punched my back. And we're not seeing that. And so maybe she's just, like we've heard here earlier, just so irritated that she's here, that she's not really getting into it. But truthful people will go back in. Look at people who are attacked by lions or bears. Years earlier, they'll talk about how they were running and then the bear scratched them. And you'll see these movements. We don't see that here. What we do see, though, with Gwyneth is she says their heads collided and their heads were uphill. This is interesting to me, Vinny, because why? Who cares if they're uphill or downhill? She could have just said, well, I don't really remember that part. No, she stuck to her guns. No, our heads were uphill because she stuck to her guns here and because she's telling us she thought that maybe someone was attacking her makes me believe her even more. I believe her. I wasn't coming in as uh, I know uh, with a lot You're of hope. Skeptical. I wasn't coming You're in. Skeptical. All right. Our I guests know. are staying with us. More testimony, more analysis. Don't go anywhere.